Smash is a complicated game with countless possible situations and interactions. At any level of gameplay, there's almost always a way for you to outplay your opponent at any moment. But what does it really mean to outplay someone? Outplaying can be defined as a decision or execution that intentionally beats out your opponent's intended decision or execution. In layman's terms, it just means that you want an interaction and both of you and your opponents didn't make any mistakes. Mistakes often happen in Smash even at higher levels and they can be equally punishing or rewarding as outplaying or being outplayed, but this is quite different. For our question of the day, what's the hardest that you've ever outplayed someone? Let us know down in the comments below and stay tuned to learn how you can outplay your opponents like a pro player. To take your learning even further, there's no better place than ProGuys.com. Our website is filled with competitive resources and not just for Smash but for League of Legends, Team Fight Tactics, Fortnite, and much more. In our Smash category, you can access guides and tips for every character in the game, so we have something for every player. Do you want to learn directly from players like MKLeo, Zero, and Esam? Well, we offer pro courses with these players that you won't find anywhere else. If that is not enough, our Play With Pros platform gives you access on top coaches who can personally guide you to the next level. We've also recently launched live streams, so you can catch them right here on our YouTube channel on Monday through Friday at 12 o'clock PST. This is free, so make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you never miss them. To understand the concept of outplay more simply, we can break it down into ways you can outplay your opponents in three stages of gameplay, neutral, advantage, and disadvantage. Before we get into those though, let's establish the more common themes that you see in all of them. Outplay will involve a few factors. The first is recognizing habits and patterns. If you notice that your opponent has a certain response to a particular situation, you can use that to either read that response or react to it much quicker for a more brutal punish. Remember that habits almost always have an A to B or cause and effect, meaning that the habit will usually be prompted by specific factors. The next way to outplay is with reads or guesses. Reading an opponent for a habit is sort of a hybrid of both, but in some situations you can go for read based on other factors. Perhaps the situation is 50-50 and you guess right, or maybe your opponent has a been using a particular mix-up and you can call it out. Mix-ups are a big part of outplaying and you can always make use of your own mix-ups by first conditioning your opponent. Conditioning is a term what we use to describe the process of getting your opponents used to something happening, to the point where they instinctively expect the thing. We can use this to punish our opponent because we know exactly what the response to that expectation is. The last main method of outplaying comes in the form of execution. Getting a precise parry or moving perfectly outside the range of a dangerous attack can win you situations just as well. Yet this is very difficult from the other methods which are more mentally based. Smash can be loosely described as a high execution chess, which approximately 50% of the game is based off strategy and the other 50% is execution. Mastering both is essential to outplay your opponents at the highest level. So, let's start with ways to outplay neutral. Neutral can be defined as any situation where neither player has a clear advantage over the other. This usually means that both players are on the stage moving around looking for a hit. Neutral is the most complicated phase of gameplay and likewise the hardest to master. All of the methods of outplaying we mentioned earlier apply to neutral. In terms of habits, you should identify your opponent's goal in neutral. You might know this just by knowing their character. For example, an Ike player is most likely looking for a Nair in neutral. Until you see how your specific opponent plays neutral, you should prioritize the options their character typically relies on, but make sure to watch how they play. For example, you can shield when Ike approaches you just in the beginning of the game, but if you notice that he starts going for more grabs, then you'll need to adjust. Shielding in this situation isn't counterplay or any really outplay yet, this just means that you're defending yourself while you gather information. Once you confirm that the Ike is indeed looking for Nairs, you can now outplay him by punishing this strategy. Ike's Nair is a great example of a fundamental method of outplaying in neutral, also known as anti-airing. Ike's Nair and many other falling aerials are safe in Smash Ultimate, so whiff or shield punishing these isn't the most effective. Instead, you can capitalize on the fact that these characters need to first reach the apex of their jump before starting the aerial in order to fall down with it. This gives you time to hit them as they ascend, so you should attempt to preemptively aim the area above your opponent's character, anticipating their jump. You can do this with so many aerials, as well as up tilts and up smashes. Some common characters looking for falling aerials are Ike, Wolf, and Cloud. Another common goal in neutral is landing rising aerials. The counterplay is basically the opposite of a falling aerial. Rising aerials start quickly with lag at the end, and falling aerials are delayed so the punishable window is in the beginning. Some characters like Mario can swing a rising shore hop aerial and a falling aerial before they land so pretty often you'll have to respect that. To punish a typical rising aerial though, the answer is with punishing. Your goal here is to avoid the aerial but stay close enough to swiftly move in and punish as soon as it ends. Some common characters who look for rising aerials in neutral are Palutena, Wario, and Pikachu. Whether they're rising or falling, good players know how to space their aerials effectively, so it won't be just as simple to punish them. What pros do to deal with this is to make use of their movement in order to bait the opponent and make them miss space. For example, good Palutena players won't nair if the opponent is far away. Because of this, you can dash close to Palutena to bait a rising nair, then immediately dash away and position yourself for a whiff punish. 
Conversely, many falling aerials are only safe on shield when spaced at max range. Against these, you can start by moving away, then dash back in your shield right before the opponent swings. If done properly, your opponent will hit your shield at point blank range, leading to a potential out of shield punish. Just as movement can be used to outplay your opponent and with punish them, you can also read your opponent's movement to outplay them as well. This introduces the concepts of overshooting and undershooting. If you notice that your opponent likes to move away when you move towards them, then you can aim your attack further away in anticipation of this to overshoot it. On the contrary, if your opponent runs towards you a lot, you can perform your attack earlier and closer to undershoot it and let them run into it. Getting back to common neutral goals, many characters rely on a ground burst option to get in. If this option is a dash attack, such as with Fox or Greninja, then you can put up your shield when the character gets near you and prepare to punish their dash attack. If the option is a grab, then you can opt out for more spot dodges and attacks. Naturally, the next layer will be that your opponent is waiting for you to do something before they go for their burst option. So now you can use your movement to bait them into throwing out their option. Make it seem like they can whiff punish you, for example, but you know that you have enough time to defend their burst option and then punish it. Finally, let's go over the mix-ups in neutral. Getting back to IX Nair example, skilled players know that they won't get away from spanning falling near constantly, so they'll introduce other options to deal with the counterplay to the near strategy. If the opponent shows that they're going for anti-aerial plays, I can mix up with a rising aerial or an up tilt. If the opponent is shielding every time the Ike approaches, he can opt for a grab. At top level, pro players are constantly switching up their favored options and trying to stay one step ahead of each other in choosing the right mix-up layer. There are just really too many options and situations in neutral to list them all, but each works similarly. Starting with the clear goals, understanding their counterplay, and then the mix-ups that counter the counterplay. Now for the advantage state. Advantage and disadvantage are so much simpler, because there's a clear limit to what can happen. Advantage state starts when you win neutral, and the first step is almost always getting to whatever true follow-ups that you have. But that's not really outplaying, so we're going to go ahead and go to the next step. Once your combo ends, your opponent will likely be in the air or off stage, so now it's your job to work around the few options that you have. In the air, your opponent can jump, air dodge, or attack. Dealing with these individually is pretty simple, but you'll first need to consider which is most likely. You should pay very close attention to what habit your opponent has. Hit them and wait to see what they do and try to react and punish. This is easier the next time you get into the situation as you have an idea of their habits and what to expect. Against players with a little bit more skill, they won't just be throwing out their panic option as soon as you hit them. You'll need to thread them by going for or fainting an attempt on hitting them. Even though they only have 3 options in the air, the timing of these options make a big difference, as does the drift. Aerial movement works the same way as ground movement in terms of ability to bait things. Consider where your opponent may be drifting and overshoot or undershoot any attacks as needed. At the top level, players will be heavily mixing up their options and disadvantage as well as their timing and position. So you'll once again need to look for any patterns and habits and then consider what their mix-up might be. It's also important to remember what patterns and habits that you are suggesting, as these will influence your opponent's next decision as well. This rundown on advantage applies to both juggle and edge guarding situations, although for edge guards, the mix-up and patterns revolve around your opponent's simultaneous effort to avoid your tax and recover. The last situation where you cannot play an advantage comes from ledge trapping. Pay attention to your opponent's patterns in their getup options, as well as how your ledge trapping actions influence them. For example, dashing away might bait your opponent to get a normal getup, and dashing towards the ledge might bait them to roll. Like with any other situation, your goal is to stay one step ahead of your opponent to outplay them. Finally, understanding how to outplay and disadvantage is very similar to advantage, as you'll be working with the same potential options. In this scenario, you're the one that is limited, so you should try to first use your movement to bait an action out of the opponent that you can avoid. Avoiding an attack will give you some time to land or recover. Just like with ground movement, you can drift towards your opponent to bait them into undershooting their attack and drift away at the last minute to avoid it. This lets you recover without necessarily wasting any resources. Speaking of which, you should also try to use your resources for the right purpose. Top players will save their defensive options for the moment they expect their opponent to swing based off of what they noticed on their gameplay so far. We hope that this video gave you a good look into the mind of a top player, and some useful tips to help you understand how to get an edge on your opponents. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as check out ProGuys.com and click that notification bell to stay up with all of our Smash content. And with that all being said, I hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.